Hey everyone, Shaver 1000 here. Today we got a 2006 Ford Expedition. It's coming up with a start. This is a customer's car. Started acting up on him. And uh, so I went down Saturday morning, check it out for him. Couldn't get it doing anything, couldn't get it to read any codes. So we took it for a drive, nothing, no codes. Finally, when he was backing into his driveway, it started chugging on it. So we went ahead and uh, I ran the codes real quick on it and I did get a code, it was P0022, which is bank number two uh, cam sensor. So we're going to put that in on this thing. I'm going to see if it's got any codes right now. <clears throat> and uh, so I can show you the code. But um, yeah, let me grab my code scanner. We're going to see if it's throwing that code again because it wasn't doing it before. So I don't know how it's running yet this morning. But let's go ahead and see if that code is still in there. Okay guys, so this is pretty simple. There's your book. This is the code scanner. I don't know if you can read that. This thing's getting old. I have to get another one. But right now it's it's a uh, same pocket scanner on it. So what you want to do, you want to find your little plug. It's usually underneath the dash here somewhere. In this case is right there. <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna put the key in and turn the key on. Phantom, he feels like he's under finance. Okay. Yeah, he's being usually outside, that's for sure. All right, thanks so much. Uh, Andy's uh, sick beaker. All right, now we're gonna, we're just gonna put read. We're gonna push the read button. See, right now it's saying no codes. I don't know if you can see that, but it's saying no codes. But when I did get that code, I know what it was because I got to read it then, so. We're gonna pop the hood. I'll get you out here on a stand. And uh, I know this thing's a pain to open up. Cause it needs, I don't know, it needs oil or something. So let me get you on a stand. And I'll show you where that is on this particular vehicle. All right guys, right down in here. This is the air breather box. Right down right down in there right dead center of your screen it's like a 10 millimeter bolt that's what we need to replace um, I'm gonna go ahead and take this air breather box off of here the top of the box off I'm gonna go ahead and take this off because so I don't get down in here and break this plug off of here so I'm gonna take this off and move it out of the way giving me a little bit more room and I'll get a wrench and we'll replace the part that we got right there and um, then we should be ready to ready to go so there goes his buddy that's actually the guy we're working on that's actually his truck and tractors there or lawnmowers there so all right let me get you on the stand We'll get this unplugged and get this box off of here and move this out of the way. I guess he got him a new one this morning. And uh, I don't know if he'll bring it by or not, but I guess he got him another one. Cause this one's starting to give a little bit of problems. They've had it for a while. It's got some miles on it. this pull off just like that 
we'll check this for him. And as you can see, it's pretty decent shape. So, um, yeah, I can get down there to that real easy now. Let me see if I can get you another angle. I don't know how well. I got to go get my little step ladder to stand on my step ladder. But, uh, yeah, you can see now, you got plenty of room to work down there now. There it is right there, center of the screen. That's it. I'm going to grab a wrench. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to set you up here, but let me go get my wrench, and then um, we'll get that out of there and get the new one put in. Okay, guys, I know you can't see much, but here's the plug. Right on the end of the plug, there's a clip you push in, and you can pull that and unplug that plug. I'll try to show that to you here in a minute. And it is a... Uh, it's an eight millimeter, which five sixteenths would work on it. I know you can't see much, I'm sorry. But right now I'm going by feel, so. All right, got it loose. They're not very tight. You could probably use a wrench. Because it's, like I said, it's not tight at all. Alright, there's the bolt. Alright. Now let's see if we can twist this out of here. Sometimes they can stick in there and you and you don't, whatever you do, don't break that off in there. This one Seems like it's going to come out okay. Uh, all right, maybe not. It's turning, but it doesn't want to come out. So you got to be careful when you're pulling on that. So I'll show you the new one. Um, you know, they're just plastic, so. It has a little o-ring on there to keep them from leaking. And that o-ring goes in there, it fits pretty snug. But this is, this is it right here. And that's what you gotta overcome. So if you go prying on this and you snap that off, you could be, it could be bad news for you. And I know this because I had a customer bring me one in that was snapped off but that's what we're doing so it's down in there so i'm gonna have to move you so i can get to the kind of to the side i'll show you that there it is there it is right there all right and the plug is right right here it can only plug on one way so but there's that little tab right there. You squish that tab down and you pull that out. So let me see if I can get that pulled out of there without breaking it, and I'll be back with you. I'm gonna to try to get a pair of pliers on there and pull straight out. Don't try to wiggle up and down. I'm gonna to try to get, where the hell? So I'm gonna to try to get a pair of pliers on there and pull it straight out. Uh, so this is where I had you guys sitting up in here, pointing down. Um, I can't get you up in here anyway. So, all right, guys, let me do that and I'll be back with you. All right, guys, there's the old one. As you can see, it wasn't leaking. See this stuff on here? If I would clean that, this would probably work fine. But we already got one. They're cheap. Uh, this was like 38 bucks, um, and it was mid mid grade. You got you got one that's like. 50 some one one that's 20 some 30 some and 40 or 50 some so um, But I'm not going to clean that I just had him get another one. I, I have been successful 50 50 times on these um, I have cleaned them before and they work fine, but I have cleaned them for uh, people and um, You know that just wanted me to try it Because I didn't charge them anything just to clean it pull it out and clean it and it worked for a little bit and then 
it started acting up again. But then again, like I said, I've done them before where the person never had a problem after that. So, but we've, you know, for that kind of money, you might as well, you got to take it out anyway. You might as well throw a new one in if you can afford it. If you can't, I understand. There's been times on my own vehicles I've had to clean stuff like this and try to make it work. You know, one time I had, it was a, it was an oil, oil sending unit. And there's something like this. No, 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 no. It was a temperature sending unit. And there's something like this. And one of those little prongs in there had broken off. So I had to try to finagle it to get my temperature sending unit to work. So, but, because I didn't have the money to go spend $20 on one. Believe it or not. Yeah, I know. A lot of people go, just put a new one in. Just put a new one in. Some people can't do it. You can't afford 20 bucks. No, some people can't. Some people can't, you know. Well, I just take, why don't you just take it to, to you know to a real mechanic and you know because people can't afford that stuff all right guys so let me try to get let me try to get you set up again over here and we'll put this back in oh yeah i think i forgot to show you but i'll show you again all i did like if you're looking at the side of it i'm looking at it like this all i did was stuck my pliers on there like this and i twisted it and gave it a little tug and it popped right out so just be mindful of that um, yeah, that's all I did was put them pliers on there like that and just twisted, poop, and it popped right out. Okay, guys, before you put that in, put some kind of lubricant on it. I just used a little bit of WD 40. You can use Vaseline, you can use motor oil. Just smear a little bit on that rubber o ring, and I just popped it right in there. You got to give it, put a little pressure on it, and it'll go right in. So, I'm going to put that bolt in and I'm going to plug that back in. And I'll bring bring you back with me when I put the airbox on because I can't get you a good shot anyway because once I do then my hands are in the way. But you get the idea. It's one bolt, put your bolt in, plug it back in, and we'll get this put in. Okay, also when you get that in there, don't get it started, you know, and try to push that in with your bolt. Because that could be a bad idea because it could snap off right there. And you got to go buy another one so just make sure it's not real hard just make sure you push it in you'll feel it pop in so let's get this air breather back on all right real simple and we'll start it up, let it run for a couple minutes, and then we'll shut it back off, make sure there's still no codes in it. And if that code comes back, I'll know it was stored in there, and I'll clear it, because I know that's not an issue anymore. This has a little red thing. Now on the bottom, you just pull that out and one plug. And when you plug it back in, push that red thing in, it'll click. And there you go. All right. So now let's go ahead. Um, oops, I got one short leg here. Let's head you guys up on that step. Uh, all right. Let's start it up. And like I said, I'm going to let it warm up. Maybe take it for a drive. There it is. So, yeah, that was an intermittent problem too. Like I said, I went over there to check it out and it was running fine for a while. So, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take it for a ride up down the street, let it get warmed up, bring it back, and uh, then I'll be back with you. I'll make sure it's running good, and then we'll check the codes again together. Okay, so, I took it for a ride. Got it up to speed a few times. Got it up to normal operating temperature. I know you can't see this, but I'm just gonna check. And then I'm gonna go ahead and clear it anyway, just in case there is a stored code that wants to pop up later. Scan. Because sometimes when you do this, sometimes well, most of the time they won't reset themselves. So, anytime you got a code 
and you replace the part that code's going to still be in there so make sure you have your codes it said fail no codes I didn't have the key all the way on um, but I'm going to hit erase anyway erase yes hold it done all right now the codes are cleared so he shouldn't have any other issues so he should be good to go but something like that sometimes they'll the codes will clear themselves you know after you drive them a while but sometimes they won't i've had a lot of people bring stuff to me and said you know i had a multiple misfire i changed the plugs and wires and it's running fine now but i still got a code And I said, well, that code's stored in there. It still thinks there's something wrong with it. Or that code's still there. You know, you have to have the codes cleared. So I'd clear them for them because in my hometown, they'll read the codes for you at the parts store, but they won't clear them. So, uh, because people was taking cars in and had to check engine light on, they would clear the codes and then take it in and trade it in, you know. Uh, but, so, you know, I would check codes. I would run a diagnostic. I never charged anything. So, but yeah, they, they bring it to me. It's still, you know, I had the codes ran again and it's telling me the same thing, multiple misfire. And they're like, it's running fine. You can hear it. Listen to it. It's running fine. It's not missing anymore. It's running perfect, better fuel mileage, but that check engine lights on and it's giving me the same code as a multiple misfire. And I'm like, well, you got to clear that code. So just remember that if you do have a code and you go to a part store, you know, and have them read once you replace that part it's best to clear that code if it doesn't go away itself and sometimes it'll go away but it's still stored in that computer so like before you had to have computers flashed you could you know go to an auto yard and buy a computer free car and put it in it plug and play and it, it would start up and run now you got to have them flashed but back then you could do that but then you could get check engine lights and you could tell whatever the car it came out of what problems it had previously so that was pretty cool but yeah just make sure you know you have to have them codes cleared uh, sometimes certain vehicles you can just unhook the battery for you know they say five minutes or you can unhook it overnight sometimes that works but not all the time because sometimes like on the newer ones when when that code is stored in there it's stored in there it won't leave so just be mindful of that so anytime you have something done like that that does throw a code if it trips a code when you replace that part or fix the problem make sure you clear them codes so it's not in there to maybe want to pop up at a later date for no reason so this one should be good to go i'm good to go i got some things i want to do here in a little bit so i'll see you guys in the next one thanks for watching guys see you better the man of legend I'm gone for now again 2006 expedition Real simple fix. Uh, code P0022, so it's a 022. All right, we'll see you guys. Bye bye. Shea Bear, the myth, the man, a legend, gone for now. Bye bye, guys, and take care.